Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to 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 share the the presentation with uh, with a colleague, Roberto Roberto Pierdicca from University of Ancona. So he will give a first an introduction, and then I will go more into detail uh, about this work, uh, which is related to the three D surveying of uh, a, a very nice underground uh, environment, which is located in the center of Italy, and it's called Camerano. And the idea is to show you, uh, first of all, the technologies that uh, you could use and that we have used. And second, uh, some uh, few messages as a lesson learned in case you want to replicate or you want to do uh, such uh, uh, similar things. Uh, so a uh, few words from my side, uh, I come from uh, or I work uh, in, in Italy in a research center which is called FBK or Bruno Kessler Foundation and um, as, uh, as a researcher I lead uh, a, a group which is called 3D Optical Metrology. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot be there but uh, I, I have too, too many other commitments and moreover here it's uh, snowing so it's a very good comparison with respect to, to your weather. Uh, so now I, I give the floor to, to Roberto for the first uh, introduction, uh, and then uh, I will uh, continue. I can keep the slides, Robby. Thank you, Fabio. Good morning, everyone. And thanks the organizer for, as usual, this useful training school. I have been in another one, so I hope that I can bring even my contribution. And thanks to Fabio for calling me to share this presentation because uh, besides describing the case study uh, from the city where, uh, where I live, so I, I'm making the honors of my house here. Uh, we, we have shared uh, an experience together with the, the 3D recording. So basically what uh, my mission today is just to give you a, an overview of what's going on in the field of uh, mapping and geomatics in general. Uh, starting from what I do generally with my students, that is uh, sharing which are nowadays the technologies that uh, are used for 3D recording and surveying in the field of geomatics. Here you see uh, a simple graph that show uh, the, the, the mesh up between the sides of the object that one has to the face width for the surveying and in the abscissa and in the vertical axis, sorry, you can see the complexity. So it means how many points do we need to uh, represent the 3D shape much more faithful as possible uh, of our object. And here you see all the umbrella of technologies uh, and today we are going to uh, introduce one that maybe is the better for uh, uh, 3D recording in the case of underground, since we are talking about, about underground heritage. So GNSS is not working. Uh, working with the direct surveying is very difficult because generally uh, there are uh, difficult conditions that hamper the 3D, the, 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 the measurements. There, are, there is no lights, and we will see it even in the final slide. So basically, we will concentrate on uh, mobile mapping system. Sorry, Fa, can you? Yes, I, I don't find any more. <laughs> <laughs> Today presentation we need to, to, to show. Yes, I think uh, it, it's gone. Okay, let me find it again. And uh, so we, we have concentrated this presentation, thank you, Fabio, uh, just on uh, the, the red one that you see here in these slides, that means slam, we will see that the, we, we cannot just say slam, that means uh, simultaneous localization and mapping because uh, nowadays the technology has gone on and uh, uh, developed new solutions that merge a lot of sensors together in one solution. And we are going to see some of them. Because, okay, can you move to the next slide, Fabio, please? Because, uh, uh, as I said before, nowadays the possibilities offered by uh, generally geomatics, when I say geomatics, I mean uh, 
simplifying the, the concept of 3D recording, but it is really, really more. We can use satellite images for mapping our territory. We can use the photogrammetry or terrestrial laser scanning or direct measurements like total stations and GNSS going to the drones. But again, we are um, concentrating on the management, the conservation, the valorization of underground built heritage. So all these set of solutions that you see here in these slides are not allowed to be used, uh, at least not all the time and not all together. So our research, first research question when talking about underground heritage uh, was, uh, is there a uh, only one solution that can allow us to uh, record in 3D and represent in 3D our built heritage? And we 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 move to the to the uh, experimentation of some new tools that uh, could be used in the underground sets. Can you move, Fabio? Thank you. Uh, another the first take home message. We will talk about costs, we will talk about time of recording, we will talk about uh, velocity of acquisition, and first and foremost, accuracy and, pre and precision. Why I generally concentrate on this? Because uh, we have to, first of all, wonder why we are taking these measurements, and second, who are going to use these measurements. Because if we need to make a good representation and to share for valorization purposes, for instance, uh, we can be uh, a bit more uh, light on pushing on the accuracy and uh, precision. But the more we spend, the more, the, the more time we use to exploit the 3D recording tools, uh, we expect a more higher precision and accuracy. And here you see the difference between one uh, to another. So uh, when we decide and we plan, we design the uh, project for making 3D recordings in underground, we have to first of all wonder which will be the precision that I will reach, which will be the accuracy that I will reach, which will be the balance between the resolution of the points that I collect, the balance and the resolution of the uh, images that, uh, sorry, I have to stop my uh, notifications. Um, and more and more. So we will show you a comparison between uh, off the shelf devices, which we will see that are not so cheap and they're very, very expensive sometimes, but of course they allow you to have a quick recording and to reach the higher accuracy between uh, other tools and one developed by, by Fabio that we compared with the off the shelf uh, products that enable to uh, reach the same accuracy and the same resolution, but in exchange of something else. So maybe the, the, the processing is more complex and so on. So this is the, uh, the objective of this lesson. Uh, going underground means uh, a lot of uh, hampering stuff like uh, uh, generally, we have not so much money to, to make the recording because we know that the general problem with cultural heritage in general and not only for uh, the underground is uh, the expenses. So we thought at the beginning, can we use low cost solutions for that? The solution should be even agile because uh, uh, in Camerano that I will show in a few slides, the situation was, let me say, agile but not all the time when you go underground for making recording is so uh, easy. Cost effective, that is what I said before, easy to use. Easy to use does not just mean go push a button and record, but you have to figure out what you are going to record and very, very important, how you will process those data, uh, those data. because when you perform uh, slicing, when you perform 3D modeling, when you uh, provide the institutions, the administrations with the uh, byproducts, I mean plants, sections, prospects, and so on, it is not so easy to, to, to get the result, or you have to uh, reach a, let me say, high degree of uh, 
uh, expertise to perform and process those data. And affordable, that means uh, if I have, let me give an, you an example. If you um, have to make a sort of restoration or monitoring, you have to go several times to, 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 to make the survey time by time. And this could be not affordable. So uh, the, the comparison that you will see uh, in the next slides will try to give an answer to this bullet point. Here you see some solutions that are nowadays existing from the market, uh, like a Trimble, uh, Topcon, and other very high brand under the umbrella of Hexagon and other great, great companies and enterprises that develop this solution are going to develop solutions that merge different sensors. Here you see the backpack, for instance, that has a, a GNSS, uh, Omni cameras, the LIDAR that you see here in the, in the center of the, of the slides, IMU, and a lot of other sensors that integrated all together allows you to collect everything. So it means the, the, the textures, the, the trajectory that you perform when you go underground, the 3D uh, reconstructions, of course. Sometimes, and I ask Fabio to go to the next slide, sometimes we have even a big issue that the humans cannot go because it's risky. So uh, I, I am studying some solution with, uh, with our partners. And just yesterday, I've seen something that uh, I wanted to share today with you uh, because uh, this solution that uh, is um, developed by um, Trimble, uh, first of all, another important thing, we are not making other advertising to the to these products, so we are not uh, um, in charge of set, of telling you these uh, these tools just for making advertisement. But it is just what we are testing in our in our laboratories. I don't know if the the video is going on, Fabio, because I think it's. I see it in the back. In, in I, the I don't see. I don't know if the the audience is uh, seeing. But I wanted to, 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 to show this slide because beside the possibility to go directly with a backpack by a person, there will be some times when you cannot go because it's risky. Let's think, for instance, to the earthquake or very, very small environment where the operator cannot go. And the technology is moving toward developing solutions that are autonomous. So you see this uh, uh, funny dog in the, in the left uh, downside of the slides. We can go underwater with these solutions, but what it is important that the technologies, and this is another very, very important, are not just going to record, but the technologies are going to sense the environment. This drone that is uh, going uh, through this cave has not the waypoints. So it was not programmed to make a, 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 a path, but using the LiDAR technologies, like the, the beep that you see, that you hear in your, in your car to not crash with, the, with the, the car behind, is exactly the same, but in real time and continuously. So this drone is able to not go in collision with the walls and is able to perform alone the, uh, the 3D modeling. Uh, the drawback, the more the technology is going and the more the, 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 the costs increase. So I go to the, to the um, case study and then I leave the floor to, to Fabio just to uh, finalize this, uh, this first introduction. Uh, because this case study, I don't know if someone of the audience, I guess so, uh, was aware about the case study that we have chosen for uh, underground built heritage from our side is uh, uh, Camerano Caves. And we have been lucky because what Fabio is going to show you is that uh, this comparison was made with the ground truth. And it is not so uh, trivial because uh, uh, the study that we performed was made between some of the shelf, as I told you, products with a prototype that Fabio will show, but having in mind that we collected even a, a strong ground route with the terrestrial laser scanning that was made 
uh, by a company who I thank, and I thank even the uh, administration of Camerano for allowing us the, uh, the, this, this study. And as you see in, in, uh, in the right part of the slides, uh, Camerano has a very, very articulated uh, uh, path underground. The, uh, the, 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 the caves were used for storing uh, food, for um, uh, religious uh, rituals and so on. But what we had the possibility to do was to make this comparison thanks to the existence of a, a strong ground truth that we can see in the next slide, as, as far as I remember, Fabio, from, uh, from this video. Exactly. So in the, in the left part, you see the map of the underground mapped over the, the 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 city in the in the down part you can see the the section and how it is articulated and uh, uh, I I cannot see the video so I don't know if it is uh, if it is running uh, exactly. it doesn't run it doesn't run it doesn't okay uh, it was useful to, for you to 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 see this uh, this video, but I can share you even the link if you if you don't mind later because it is public in uh, in the YouTube. Because we have used this uh, uh, this surveying as the baseline for our comparison and to achieve our conclusion on and take on messages or pros and cons of the different technologies. Uh, using the, the, the ground truth. So we will discuss about the accuracy, we will discuss about the resolution, the illumination or not. And we had the chance to do it because previously, as far as I remember in 2017, more or less, we had the chance to get this very, very high uh, resolution survey with uh, uh, terrestrial laser scanning. So basically, Fabio, if you want to 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 go exactly this is the the the, the video but i don't know if uh, if the the um, connection support us roberto should work it's working here yeah. okay i'm sorry but i could not see it okay in the in the right part of the video you can see what i was talking about the complexity of the caves uh, is uh, is quite clear because it is not just complex the path because it is very articulated, but there are a lot of niches. There are, are a, a lot of, um, of levels. A lot of these environments are not allowed to be visible by the, by the public before, uh, for uh, uh, security reasons. And uh, uh, the, the materials that you, I, I don't know how to say in English, sorry, Fabio, maybe you can help me. The, the, the material of the stone is- uh, Limestone? Uh, it's limestone, thank you very much. And it is really uh, difficult for, uh, for a tool from another to collect uh, all the roughness and the bump of, uh, of the material. So there are uh, a lot of issues in this case study and it was very challenging. And in our opinion, this, uh, this comparison can really help to understand the different methodologies that can be used nowadays uh, both reality-based, like Fabio uh, like uh, to do uh, using computer vision and photogrammetry, but there are even other solutions, maybe um, entrusted on the LiDAR, that is the, the, the scanning substantially. And we will see the comparison between these methods on the case study that you are looking at in, in this video. So I guess that I didn't... in the comparison that we did together. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, yes, so you, 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 you have seen um, uh, the, the complexity of this uh, underground. Uh, you see, I think, uh, I hope still in the video because I don't see what you see. Uh, you see all these uh, uh, corridors and niches uh, uh, underground. Uh, they are quite dark, uh, very uniform color. Uh, this limestone not very helpful for uh, imaging, so very, very nice uh, uh, environment. So to, to, to do some uh, uh, investigation, what we wanted to do 
uh, we want first of all uh, to to document uh, and to digitally document so to create now the 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 the, the buzzword of the moment the digital twin uh, of this uh, uh, underground uh, heritage uh, in uh, in camerano uh, so the first thing was to create uh, a, a digital copy using uh, a terrestrial laser scanning this is what uh, uh, Roberto just presented, and then uh, we wanted to move uh, to um, mo mobile uh, solutions, uh, which is the focus uh, now of uh, the, the second part of the talk. Mobile solution, uh, solutions for, for doing 3D mapping, which are based on the technology that Roberto presented before, which is called SLAM, Simultaneous Localization and, uh, and Mapping. So we tested basically three different uh, uh, solutions. Uh, that uh, we, we want to show it to you, just to show you the pros and cons uh, and to give you some uh, messages about these uh, technologies. So the first one uh, uh, belongs to a commercial system developed by this company, St uh, Carta, and the instrument is called uh, uh, Stencil. Actually, it's not uh, the very, very last uh, instrument for, uh, for this company. Uh, they have uh, a, a, new, a newer version, but uh, uh, the surveying was done uh, uh, most, more or less uh, uh, one year ago. So that's why we use uh, this uh, uh, sensor, the, stencil, the Carta Stencil 2. Uh, so as you see from the picture on, uh, on the left, uh, there is basically a, a processing unit, which is the box, the, the box below. On top of it, there is this cylinder, which is the LiDAR, so the, the laser scanning, which is moving and which is rotating, spinning, using 16 uh, lasers. And then on the right, you see a very small uh, cameras. So all the data uh, are acquired and processed together, based uh, or mainly, let's say, commanded by, by the camera. And in real time, using this SLAM technology, uh, the 3D data are formed and are put together. And then on the right, you see another example where the sensor can be controlled and commanded using a tablet. And uh, uh, in the tablet, you see more or less in real time uh, the 3D shape, which is slowly uh, forming. Uh, the second instrument or the second portable uh, mobile mapping system uh, that we, we test and we use uh, is coming from the company called Geoslam and it's the, ver the version called Horizon, so Geoslam Horizon. Uh, very similar to the previous one, so it's portable. Uh, you see on, uh, on the left picture, there is again this uh, LiDAR sensor, so this uh, active laser scanning sensor. Uh, again, uh, uh, 16 uh, uh, parallel la uh, laser lights, which are uh, thrown to the scene, and then uh, the signal comes back, uh, and the, the instruments record uh, uh, the, 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 the returning signal in order to transform this uh, into 3D uh, coordinates. Uh, the system can also be coupled with, uh, with a camera, so also in this time, also for this, this kind of sensor, you can get the 3D in terms of uh, point cloud, and then on top of it, uh, if you're lucky, you can also map uh, some RGB uh, information. Uh, and the last one, the last uh, technology that we, we, we wanted to test uh, is uh, a, a kind of prototype that we have developed uh, in, uh, in my group uh, here in, uh, in FVK Trento. Uh, it's, we call it GUFO, uh, which uh, means a guided photogrammetric system. So you can see on the right uh, some, uh, some images. You see it's also portable because uh, a person can handle it with, uh, with the hands. There are two uh, cameras on top. The cameras are slightly convergent in order to have uh, uh, stereo capabilities, uh, because uh, when, you, when you wanna do stereo, when you wanna do 3D from images, you need uh, uh, stereo, so you need uh, overlapping images. And then you see on, in, in the center, there is a mobile phone, uh, which is used to visualize uh, uh, the 3D of the scene, which is uh, uh, automatically and in real time created, again, using SLAM uh, technology. Um, in, 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 inside the, the, the system, inside GUFO, there is a small processing unit based on a Raspberry camera. And then, of course, there is a battery pack, the same battery pack that you can use to, to charge your phone, uh, which is, of course, giving uh, power, energy to the cameras, to uh, the, the, the Raspberry uh, small ARM computer, and to, to the mobile phone. So the system is very light, is very cheap, and uh, again, is very uh, portable. 
Uh, the, the cameras are uh, acquiring videos. The videos uh, are processed in real time. And out of these videos, selected frames are uh, identified, what we normally call keyframes. These keyframes are processed using SLAM or photogrammetry. And then uh, on the mobile phone, in real time, you can see the 3D, which is slowly uh, created. Uh, I don't know if you can see, for example, in the lower picture, you see that uh, there is uh, the, the 3D of the room uh, with the green dots, uh, which are the cameras, and the blue is the, are the points uh, representing the uh, scene. And why is called uh, a guided photogrammetry system? Because, uh, of course, it's not only SLAM, but uh, in, again, in real time, the system is sending messages, is sending alerts, uh, or information to the users. For example, you get alert if you are moving too fast. You get alert if, uh, uh, for example, the, um, the network, so the image position are, is, uh, is not very good. And uh, quite also important in terms of 3D surveying, you get alert if the 3D which, are, uh, uh, which you are creating is not good enough. What does it mean? When you do a surveying, you need to fix some parameters. And one of these parameters, which is very important for the final 3D restitution, this parameter is called a ground sample distance. So it means uh, which is the smallest detail that I can see in order to create uh, a, 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 a digital uh, a replica. So of course, when you move, uh, you, you, you change the distance between yourself, so between the sensor and the scene. So if you change this distance, uh, you see better or, uh, or, 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 or worse uh, a, a, an object, a scene, a detail. And this is again related to what we call GSD. So the system, this GUFO, is giving you alert if the GSD is not fulfilled. Because when you start, you need to set uh, the GSD, which is, uh, of course, helping you in the final restitution. So because of this uh, uh, support, because of these uh, uh, alerts and guided, guided system, we call uh, or we name the, the, the acquisition system guided uh, photogram photogrammetric uh, tool. Um, again, uh, in terms of hardware, as I said, there are two cameras. There is a Raspberry and there is a smartphone, uh, or you can even use a tablet if you prefer to have it uh, uh, larger on a larger monitor. And then inside, uh, uh, as I said, there is the, the SLAM uh, algorithms. There are the, the guided uh, tools that I just mentioned. And uh, there is a, a, a kind of application which is uh, bringing the visualization on top of uh, the uh, smartphone. Uh, here I, uh, you can see a video of my colleague walking uh, through the Camerano Caves. I think you see it. I think so. Yes. Um, you yes, see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the guy is moving, uh, and you see uh, in this case we put it also light because uh, inside the caves is fully dark. So you need a bit of light, which is, of course, uh, uh, something negative for uh, the, the imaging approach because uh, a laser doesn't need any light because it's, it's an active sensor. On the other hand, if you use cameras, of course, cameras record only the light which is in the environment. So you do need to support um, with external lights in case the scene is dark like a uh, camera. So uh, you see the, the, the small uh, light on top of it. You can see the two cameras, and now I stop it a bit. And then on the mobile phone, you can see the, the 3D scene, which is uh, uh, forming. Um, on, on, on this uh, mobile device, uh, you can see either the, the 3D scene or you can see the images, which uh, are uh, acquired in, in real time. <clears throat> Okay, here I, I have another example that uh, I wanted to show you just uh, to, to, to go close. Uh, let me go a bit uh, ahead. Uh, I hope you can see it uh, in the center. You see on the mobile phone, you see the blue dots, which are the 3D points, which are forming in real time. And uh, in green, these are the points, which are uh, the new points acquired. And on the left, uh, upper left, uh, you see the images, which one of the two images which are acquired. And on top of these images, you see the points uh, which are used for the tracking of the system. So what the points that we normally call uh, key points uh, or feature points. And then on the, on the lower left, uh, you see some parameters that we, we keep track. 
So the velocity, the distance from the object to the scene, the exposure time, because you know the exposure is very important in order to get very good uh, uh, images uh, and, uh, and other uh, information. And now in the center, uh, you can see also the cameras. Uh, you see these small triangles. Uh, so this is basically the trajectory that uh, is um, computed. So it means that the system is able to reconstruct uh, the different position where the person uh, uh, is moving. So all in all, uh, this video helps you also to, to, to understand this concept of uh, SLAM, so simultaneous localization and mapping. Why uh, it's called SLAM? Because in real time, you simultaneously localize uh, the camera, the, 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 the camera, so you see this, the trajectory. And again, in real time, you do the mapping. So you create uh, uh, the, the, the scene in, in 3D. Of course, uh, this scene, as you can see here from the video, is not, uh, as we normally call it, dense. So it's not a very dense reconstruction, but it's just a sparse reconstruction. But this is sufficient to understand, uh, yes, my surveying was very well done, or I, I have gaps here and there. So the utility of uh, SLAM is also this, uh, to understand on site if, my, uh, if I have done a very good job or not. Because sometimes, for example, you cannot go back to the site. So it's very important that when you are there, you, you, you already know almost in real time if you need to acquire also other spots or you, you have done already a complete survey. Okay, so moving to um, uh, the, 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 the conclusion of this uh, introduction to the systems, uh, this is just a, a, a recap of uh, some of the system that you have seen and some of the system that we have used, just to give you an idea of their components, so the sensor, but also about the costs. So you can see that the, most of the sensors, in particular the commercial one, are quite expensive. So when I put uh, a bigger than 50,000 or bigger than 30,000, so this is the lower bound, okay? So normally you can go even higher up to 100,000 uh, euro. Of course, uh, they are based mainly on laser technologies, which is, uh, I would say, quite uh, uh, reliable. On the other end, uh, the, lower the lower line uh, shows you the, 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 the prototype that we have developed that we call GUFO. You see it's only based on two cameras. So all in all, uh, the hardware uh, is around 2,000 euro. Of course, uh, as I said, it's only based on camera. So uh, it's not as reliable as a laser because you need external light in case of darkness. Uh, you need the texture surfaces and so on, but uh, the price uh, and the quality that now I will show you of the 3D results uh, are very, very uh, good. <clears throat> okay, so going to the comparison, so the, the probably the most interesting part. Uh, so you see in, uh, in the upper left, uh, you see a, a part of Camerano case. You see very uh, complex uh, uh, situation with niches, with uh, 90 degrees uh, uh, turns, uh, with a lot of corridors uh, and, and so on. And on the lower right, you see some uh, images uh, of these uh, tunnels or of uh, these uh, rooms. So you see very low light, uh, very uh, strange environments, but very, very nice uh, scenarios. So the idea is to use uh, the uh, static terrestrial as a scanning as a reference, as ground truth and to compare on top of it the three mobile mapping te technologies, okay? So the, the GeoSlam, the CARTA, and the uh, prototype solution that we, we developed. And why we do this? Because, uh, of course, they all have pros and cons, also in terms of money, as I just uh, show you, uh, and also in terms of acquisition. Just to give you an idea, the, the reference that we are using, which is acquired by a static laser scanner, <clears throat> laser scanning took more or less a week because you need to, to, to do a scanning in a certain position and the scanning takes time, let's say two, three, five minutes. Then you need to take the instruments to move, uh, uh, let's say some 10 meters, uh, 10 meters away, do another scanning, then move to another location, do another scanning. And then when you go back, you have uh, thousands of files that you need to co-register all together. So it's good, it's very accurate, but it's very time consuming. On the other end, the three mobile mapping solutions are uh, uh, much more faster, but uh, of course uh, you need to pay a little bit the price uh, of the quality, but you will see that uh, overall uh, they are all very, very uh, good. 
So here's some screenshot and the results of the photogrammetric solution. So GUFO, uh, you see on the on the upper uh, upper left uh, uh, the 3D uh, dense reconstruction of uh, what is, uh, as far as I remember, called the church. Basically, it's a church, uh, 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 let's say, excavated inside the rock. Uh, and you see that uh, it's, it's really like a church with a lot of niches. At the end, there is a small area with, uh, with a, a crypt, with uh, uh, the location where the priest uh, used to, to celebrate. And uh, uh, you, you can see from the results that the geometry is quite well uh, uh, reconstructed. Uh, of course, uh, these, are, uh, these were mainly visual results. What we did, we did uh, what is normally called profiles. So basically, we took the 3D that we generated using the three sensors. So you see the, the Carta, uh, the, the GeoSlam, and GUFO, and we cut the 3D in order to create this kind of profiles. And then we analyze the profile, not only visually, but also with respect to the ground through data. And on the lower part, uh, in the lower table, you see some, uh, some numbers. These are uh, uh, millimeters. So you can see that uh, uh, generally, uh, they all perform uh, uh, quite well. And also visually, you can see that uh, the, the, the profiles that we create, that are created, are also uh, uh, quite good. Um, but uh, when, when you zoom in uh, a little bit, uh, you can see that, for example, uh, uh, the, the Carta stencil is a little bit more noisy. What does it mean noisy? It means that uh, if you see here the, the cross section on the steps, uh, of, uh, of the monument, uh, you see that uh, the, the, the shape of the, the steps uh, is not perfectly reconstructed. So uh, there is some uh, noise, uh, some, uh, some blunders here and there, while uh, both uh, the, the GeoSlam and GUFO are performing uh, uh, much better. And also the numbers that we are reporting here in terms of um, uh, mean or standard deviation in the cloud to cloud or in the cloud to mesh comparison are uh, uh, quite good uh, and in the order of uh, a few uh, millimeters. Here, other comparison again uh, uh, to, to give you a better idea, uh, we, we created these uh, uh, cross sections and you can clearly see that uh, again the, the, the Carta stencil is a little bit more uh, uh, noisy and underperforming while the other two are, uh, are both performing pretty uh, similar. Here, another cross-section of a big uh, room. You see a lot of niches with a kind of uh, a column, a structural column, I would say, in the, in the center. And you see that uh, even in this case, the, the visual comparison, the visual impression uh, is pretty nice for both the, the SLAM, uh, the GUFO, and the, the GeoSLAM uh, solution. Uh, when it comes to more close view, and uh, now in this case only GUFO with respect to, to the commercial uh, uh, ZEB uh, horizon, you see that uh, on, on vertical walls, uh, this was a kind of door, you see that uh, uh, the, the horizon, so the one based on laser, uh, has a kind of a stripe uh, effect on, on the surfaces, while the, the, the GUFO, the photogrammetric solution, is more complete. And also, if you zoom to the steps, to the stairs, you see that the, the laser solution is a little bit more uh, uh, noisy. Of course, uh, 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 this is nothing to say that the, the ZEB is not good. It's just to show you that they both have uh, pros and cons, uh, and they are both uh, very good uh, uh, mobile solution for uh, this kind of uh, uh, 3D documentation of underground uh, uh, heritage. Here, another profile in this tunnel. You see uh, the, the central picture to give you an idea of where we are. And you see that also in this case, on the other hand, GUFO, so the photogrammetry solution is much better, while the, the ZEB, so the laser one, is a little bit more noisy. And you see that the profile is larger. It means that the noise in the data is higher with respect to the uh, photogrammetric uh, uh, solution. Okay, so uh, to, to conclude some uh, uh, takeaway uh, messages, uh, we, we, what we wanted to show you were, uh, is basically some uh, mobile mapping solution that are quite uh, uh, valuable and quite useful in underground uh, uh, context, and in particular for the 3D documentation, or 3D surveying of uh, underground uh, heritage, like the, the Camerano uh, heritage 
uh, site uh, of the um, underground uh, for value uh, project. Um, there is no winner, I would say. Of course, uh, um, it, it, you, you need to choose based on what you need, uh, based on your budget, uh, of course, uh, based on uh, your expertise. Uh, but uh, at the moment, of course, we cannot say the winner is. We can only say that uh, uh, for this application, uh, the photogrammetric solution, so the one based on cameras and not on LiDAR, provided a little bit better geometric results. Uh, we can only say that uh, the photogrammetric solution is cheaper, but we can also say that uh, in general, uh, all solutions based on LiDAR, so based on uh, uh, laser scanning, are more uh, reliable, are also more user-friendly because uh, you, you don't need to be a, a Nobel Prize to use it. Uh, you, you simply have to walk around uh, and the laser is doing basically everything for you, while uh, when you use photogrammetry, when you use uh, a 3D imaging, you need to know a little bit more uh, of, uh, of the theory behind. Uh, but in any case, uh, 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 the message that we wanted to give you is that uh, any mobile mapping solution uh, uh, among those that we have shown you is very valuable and is very good for this underground, uh, um, underground context. But, uh, and this is probably the, the best message that we want to share with you, is that in any case, uh, it's always better to, to collaborate with the experts uh, in a kind of uh, in interdisciplinary project, in a kind of interdisciplinary way. And uh, all the 3D that uh, are collected are, of course, then useful uh, for valorization, for restoration, for preservation, and not only for visualization uh, purposes. Um, what, what we have presented here uh, uh, belongs uh, or is also, let's say, uh, included uh, in, in a paper that uh, we have uh, recently published in December, uh, which is called 3D Survey of, of Underground Built uh, uh, Heritage, uh, Opportunities and Challenges of Mobile Technologies. Uh, and this was published within a special issues uh, that uh, Giuseppe was uh, managing, or I think he's still managing, uh, uh, in uh, the sustainability uh, journal, and uh, you can find uh, all the information uh, uh, there. Okay, that's it. Thank you from my side. Thank you, of course, uh, of course, also from uh, from uh, our colleagues uh, who, who were with us uh, in uh, in the nice uh, Camerano environment and that supported us for the uh, processing. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio and Roberto, for having us guided in the three D surveying. Uh, probably. We have some uh, questions from uh, the floor. Yeah. Uh, questions? Sorry, you're, you're, you're the first presentation in the morning, you know. <laughs> Cyprus climate. Okay, I don't see questions, but uh, really, it's, it's really interesting. And for uh, for the trainees, it's very important to understand the, the, the technology that is behind, because if they have facilitated the process, they need to deal also with these. Uh, for providing knowledge as we discussed yesterday. Thank you, Fabio and uh, Roberto again. And okay. We Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.